All right there, mate. Good to see you. It's Jules here from the Future Game Show. Oh, sorry, should I say the Future Game Show? I've been playing a lot of Cuphead recently, and I've been sitting here having a think about the video game industry, or more specifically, about how my entire Steam library, my back catalogue of games, is so swollen that doctors are actually very worried about it. But instead of actually taking the time to tackle these titles that have just been sitting there waiting, yearning for me to play them, I've instead dove into the deep end of looking at cancelled video games that you can still totally play. These games never even made it to market, and yet I'm here telling you that you need to play them on top of all the other stuff you've got to play. Oh, I know, it's making my head spin. Because while most people are probably completing Tears of the Kingdom, or at least building giant fire-spouting penis statues, no, you have a problem! I've been cramming wafer-thin experiences into my ever-bloated pile just for your entertainment, so let's take a look at them. The weird, the wonderful, and definitely those that won't be coming to market. As I'm Jules, this is The Future Game Show, and these are eight cancelled video games that you can still totally play. Number eight, Castlevania Resurrection. As the world continues to wait for Konami to stop thumbing its own cheeks and deliver us an actual mainline Castlevania game that isn't a slot machine, at least we can warm ourselves by the fire with the stupendous silliness that is the story behind Castlevania Resurrection. Now, because Konami is allergic to good decisions, and remember, I can 100% say this because this is a company that gave us Metal Gear Survive, Ew. it chose to cancel Resurrections despite a demo of the game making it to a closed doors E3 play press session in 1999. The thinking behind this was as the PS2 was on the horizon, the days of the Dreamcast era were coming to a close. And while this did prove to be correct, you'd think that releasing exclusive titles like this might have actually galvanized gamers into supporting the Dreamcast and saving it from this self-fulfilling prophecy. Still, the humor from this tragic cancelled game comes in here, as the reason why you can actually find and play this game today on ISO sites is that according to a story by Matt McMuscles, there was a French developer who actually went to that press event, got a copy of the game, and then just forgot it existed for about 20 years before going up to the attic and being like, Zutalos! A game! Yes, that's right, they had one of the most sought-after pieces of media in their attic for about 20 years, but credit to them for releasing the copy out into the wild, as now everyone can enjoy the resurrection of this cancelled Castlevania game. Number 7. Tomb Raider 10th Anniversary Edition Now, I know what you're probably thinking at this point here. Jules, you sexy, pale goblin of a man, there already exists a 10th Anniversary Edition of the Tomb Raider game. Look, it's a real game! Use your tiny little eyes to see it! Well, you know what, to that I say, hey man, I can't actually help that my peepers are the size of actual peas, but also, you're wrong, friend, because the 10th anniversary edition of Tomb Raider Out in the Wild isn't actually the only version in existence, as this was handled by Crystal Dynamics. It turns out that there's also another version made by Core Design themselves, you know, the actual original game's developer. And even weirder, both were working on a 10th anniversary title at the same time. Side by side, these titles couldn't feel more different, with the Crystal Dynamics iteration focusing more on action set pieces and combat, whereas the core design team specialised in more complex platforming and puzzle solving. When trailers for the core design version made their way online, it actually sparked a community war between fans as to who should get to handle the series going forward, which Eidos summarily ended by choosing to go ahead with Crystal Dynamics' celebration version. Thankfully though, the alpha for core design's experience was locked away and slowly leaked to the Tomb Raider Collective, meaning that even to this day, you can take a look at what the original team envisioned for their game. Number 6. Project Van Buren so if there's one thing that you need to know about me, my friend, it is that I love me some Fallout. I love the grimy aesthetics, I love the freedom of choice that each game offered, especially Fallout 76's choice of do you want to uninstall this hot garbage? Yes. And of course, I just love dying to the Cazadors, to the sound of my own shrill screaming every time I boot up New Vegas. So of course, I will take any new Fallout content that I can get, and while I wait staring out of a window with raindrops coming down of it for the remaster of the original games, come on Bethesda, just throw me a bloody bone here, at least I can look at Project Van Buren, aka Fallout 3 OG. Because what you see here are the efforts of Black Isle Studios on the Fallout franchise before being nuked by Interplay Entertainment when they themselves went bankrupt. A rather ill-fitting fate for an outfit that had published the likes of Baldur's Gate, Descent, and of course, the almighty Battle Chess. Seriously, that shit was wild. 
Yet while Van Buren might have been axed, some kind souls uploaded the project and development tools to Fallout forums to give fans an insight into what could have been. And while the title is as buggy as Bethesda's best patched games, aka Very, it is still an enjoyable curio, an alternate reality to the alternate reality that Fallout 3 offers. It's a real shame that this game got cancelled, as while Bethesda's Fallout 3 would go on to bring the franchise to the masses, Black Isle was the master of world-building by comparison. The dialogue options, the means of approach when it came to achieving your goals, and the vibrancy of the characters is just, well, irradiated worlds apart from what we have today. Plus, if you want any more proof of their greatness, just remember that many ex-Black Isle staffers went on to work at Obsidian Entertainment, and well, let's just say they had a hand in shaping the Fallout franchise to what we know it to be today, aka they made the best Fallout game ever. Fallout New Vegas, no, I will not be taking submissions on your opinion because I am right. Number 5. Star, Star Wars? Star Wars Battlefront 3! Number 5. Star Wars Battlefront 3. Now, way back way when I was but a youngling, my friend Liam and I used to play the ever-loving poodoo out of Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2, the most iconic moment of which being a back-and-forth conquest match that went on for three weeks, with each of us being unable to dethrone the other. Therefore, it was with great personal sadness to learn in those formative years that the much-anticipated Battlefront 3 had been cancelled, as was learning much later on thanks to deep dives into the situation of the intense friction between developers Free Radical and LucasArts. Despite being 99% finished according to some of the original staff, the game was shelved in 2008 after Hayes, another Free Radical project, underperformed. Yet, in a galaxy far, far away, ex-Free Radical staff members were planning to shoot a final shot right up Lucas. LucasArts' exhaust port, and so amassed every asset that they could before uploading them online for fans to experience. And what an experience it is, as thanks to intense fan contributions, there is actually a playable and extremely enjoyable insight in what could have been, and even an ongoing project to finish the game fully thanks to detailed notes from ex-staff members. This could be our only hope of experiencing what should have been another smash hit entry for the franchise, so you know what, go download this right now. Number 4. Drax Night Out. Now, sometimes in life, you will come across a game that will make your very bones reverberate from the shuddering echo of just one word. That being... What? Such is the case of Drax Night Out, a cancelled title for the NES... For the Nayers, whose summary caused me severe whiplash from shaking my head in disbelief, as here you play as the Dark Lord of the Night, aka Dracula, who has just woken from his slumber and is in dire need of making a booty call to what the game defines as the lovely girl Mina. Okay, okay, so far it is typical NES or Nayers minimalistic narrative, but here's the literal kicker, as this game was actually a product collaboration between Nintendo and Rebox Pumps. Yeah, that's right, the Venn diagram of people who love vampires and people who love Reebok sneakers, that clearly is overlapping enough to warrant a video game, right? But you know what the best part is? Is that the pumps are an in-game item that turns Drac from an utter loser who can't move to save his life nor jump higher than a matchbox into a speed demon with a super-powered jump. Actually, that last bit is a lie because the real best part is that this game is actually pretty decent. The setting is silly, the gameplay premise of using traps and hypnosis to make it through villagers of murder as peasants is very fun, and of course, it's Dracula wearing sneakers, how could this not be good? Also, I tell you this for none, friends, somebody out there needs to take the box art for this game and make it into a t-shirt because this, it goes hard. I'd buy one. Number 3. Resident Evil 1.5 Must not talk about Resident Evil 1.5, everybody! Everybody expects this one to be on the list, don't you do it, don't you dare! I'm sorry, but please, can we for the love of God acknowledge how good Resident Evil 1.5 is as a curio? It is an insight into a developer in utter chaos. This is them basically saying, all of this works, yet this is not what we want. It is brilliant. So I'm sorry, I know you've probably heard a lot about it, but we are going to talk about it again. Here we get to see characters that never saw the light of day, others who had their roles significantly changed, and of course we can now live with the knowledge that Kendo and Ada were once called John and Linda. <laughs> Fucking Linda. I don't know why this has popped me so much. Maybe it's because of the fact that on the PS1 video game Psychic Force, the end boss is called Keith. Keith, Linda, I feel like these two people should meet up. 
she'll bring the veggie sausages. All joking aside though, the really interesting aspect of this prototype are the zombies, who are most definitely having the last laugh here. They're tougher, they're more aggressive, and they're able to climb and even get back up from crawling, meaning that these aren't the shambling, walking K-holes that they were in the final product, they are truly dangerous. And even playing through the short section that you can download is a razor-wired tense survival experience. And for that alone, to see what could have been, and for it to actually be an easier final product that we ended up with, you owe it to yourself to check it out. Number two, PT on the Vita? Yes, 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 I know that you knew that PT was going to be on this list, much like Resident Evil 1.5, but it's one of those gaming milestones that we just need to pay attention to because mainly I just like sticking it to Konami wherever I can. <laughs> and yes, you're probably bored of hearing about how this demo was a teaser for a Silent Hills game that never came to be, or of how as a standalone experience that it's one of the best horror showcases going, and yes, you're probably well aware that Lisa was behind you the entire time. What? Yet you probably didn't know that you don't actually need a PS4 locked in a state of never updating to play PT in this current day and age. And this is because some absolute legends have homebrewed the entirety of the game to work on the PS Vita of all things. So now you can carry your heart attack around with you at all times. I tell you, the community is great sometimes, isn't it? Get out of here, mate. And number one, Tiny Toons Adventures Defenders of the Universe. So my friends, we'll end this list by me asking you a question. When is a game not a game? No, the answer to this isn't when it's a brick that's thrown through my windows to punish me for asking stupid riddle questions. The answer is when it's not released. Enter the curious case of Tiny Toons Adventures Defenders of the Universe, a title produced and completed by Treasure but then buried for unknown reasons in the early 2000s. I refuse to call it the noughties. The fact that the game had completed development only to be cancelled is genuinely head-scratching, seeing as the cost to deliver even a mediocre project would form a better return than just not releasing at all, yet here we are. All information on the project was thought completely lost, until around 2009 when an upload of the full game made its way online. And you know what? It's actually really fun. I mean, sure it's clunkier than a peg leg pirate being your upstairs neighbour, but its control scheme which sees the player using markers that they can whip through the air towards in order to dodge enemies and overcome obstacles gives it a sense of depth that is truly unique. Plus, with all the original voice actors reprising their roles and a charming art design, this is basically a full game for free that was actually just just money just left sitting on the table. Plus, let's be honest, when the game was being developed by the person behind Rakugaki Showtime, and the fact that that game is brilliant and you should all play that, this is kind of like a baby's first step version into it. So yeah, it's a bit of gaming knowledge, and it's a bit brilliant as well. I love it. And it's free. <laughs> So there we go, my friends. Those were eight cancelled video games that you can still totally play. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. But if you want to chat to me in the meantime, then why not go follow me over on the Instagrams and RetroJ styled Twitters. I don't know why I said it like that. Well, it's RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Or you could swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my board game and Warhammer content in my spare time, and it would be lovely to see you over there. Big love to you, my friend. Hope that you're treating yourself well with love and respect, because you deserve all the best things in life, all right? And do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. I want you to go out there and smash your life goals today because I believe in you and you need to believe in yourself as well, all right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'll see you soon. God, I've got a bit of a head rush doing that. <laughs> Bye.